And here we are again live. Rich here from PT Graduate. Great to um, so see you again for another edition and um, welcoming along Ben Aduse this week, who is a mate of mine from Wellington, who um, I, we met at a, a mentorship in, um, in Australia with Kaizen, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. That would have been, it would have been 2013. Yes, that's about right. Yeah, 2013. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. cool. Yeah, nearly, a while. Nearly a, nearly a decade, eh? <laughs> yeah, oh, crikey, don't. <laughs> Time just flies, right? <laughs> um, it certainly does. Thanks so much for your time. I know you're a busy man, Ben, so um, we'll, we'll get into it as, as quickly as we can. I guess a bit of an intro from what, I, um, what I've learned and what I know about you. You're a, a Men's Health Trust ambassador. Um, you are big on, um, on, on the plant-based on life in terms of, I know you've written a book about uh, with some phenomenal recipes um, for, to help people with you know, eating a more, a more plant-based diet, which is really, really good. Um, you are, uh, one of the things that stood out to me when we met was that you're big into mobility. You, you had some amazing ground-based um, drills that you did. And I hadn't seen a lot of those before. I'd sort of seen animal flow, but it was, it was different to animal flow. So I'm yep. keen, to, keen to dig into that. Um, obviously you're, you're a father and a runner. You're a, um, a Lululemon um, running ambassador as well. So you've got a lot on your plate. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we Certainly. like a busy life. <laughs> Certainly do. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I like to be busy, so it's uh, yeah, it, it's good to have different challenges. Um, sure is. And yeah, running's only been maybe got into it two years ago. So yeah, yeah I was playing football or soccer, depending on where you're from. Yeah, we say football, Rich. Yes, that's um, right. Uh, <laughs> and um, I needed something to do, and I thought I'll give it yeah. a go and yeah. fall in love with the sport. So you um, you were a big soccer player back in the UK when you were a younger man. Um, is mm -hmm. that was, was that what sort of sparked your interest? That sort of did that carry you into this industry, or what's the journey there? Uh, so I mean, I played soccer, and I knew there was always an opportunity, the chance that I might not make it. Um, mm. Even back when I played football, the games were never really what got me going it was more the training I love the training I love that aspect of training and kind of being able to optimize yourself or mm. make yourself the best version of yourself and um, once I realized that I wasn't going to make the dizzy heights of professional football um, I studied a sports science degree I've always been fascinated in science and how mm. the body works mm. And that led into me working as a medical referral practitioner. So I was just usually training people who had just come from either a heart attack or it was kind of the special populations. Yeah. Um, yeah. However, they said that um, I needed more confidence uh, training people. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I was a little bit, I was a little bit too scared uh, coming fresh from university and they said, maybe you should do some PT and I, uh, give it a go and um, fell in love with PT straight away and that's kind of where I've always I've always go from a kind of I like the medical side but I also like working with people one-on-one -on -one or groups mm. as well mm. um, and it's just evolved from there really and um, yeah so football was the kickstart but the science I've always liked science and mm. um, yeah just the combination of putting them together is kind of what's carried me through I, I think it's now 16 or 17 years in oh. the career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What um, what brought you to New Zealand? So obviously you started that in the UK. Yeah. And uh, continued when you got here. Um, so, yeah, so once I was playing lower league professional soccer in the UK and um, I had give up, I had retired at the old age of 22. Uh, and, um, <laughs> oh, sorry, 23, 23, sorry. Yeah, and, um, yeah. and uh, I was working in a gym and I was playing, we played like a local tournament and one of the personal trainers were from New Zealand. And he said, you should keep playing. And I was like, oh, I don't really want to. And he was like, I can get you a trip over to New Zealand and we will look after you for six months. Yeah. Um, and you can get a job at Les Mills. Now I knew Les Mills from body pump and mm. all the classes. Mm. And then I looked online and I was like, wow, this gym looks pretty epic. Um, uh, it was about minus, I think it was like minus 10 in Newcastle in the north of England. <laughs> and I just thought, why am I here? And yeah. then I just flew upside the planet without knowing anybody. Um, yeah. And that's how I got to New Zealand. I was only meant to be here for a year and still here. 
Yeah, I've heard that story. I know that story. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. And um, so talk about the, the mobility stuff. I know that, um, you know, you taught us a few things when we we're at that mentorship. And yep. what was it that sort of, uh, what was it attracted you to those, those mobility drills? Because they were just, they were beautiful to watch, but they felt so good doing them as well. Yeah. So um, it was a combination of when I played football, I was always injured. It was just, the higher I got, it was like, injuries would happen and I would never really reach my full potential mm. and I was known um, as having the flexibility of a plank of wood uh, I just wasn't <laughs> mobile at all uh, and I just thought even, even with my training with the strength work as soon as I got to a point when I was left a bit heavier or doing anything it always seemed to be there was a niggle and I was just yeah. like this is not what I want to do. This is not what I want to feel like. I, you know, I want to have um, longevity within my movement life and mm. and i ended up reaching out to a guy who was a martial artist he was a jiu-jitsu coach uh, but he loved the whole aspect of natural movement and um i was working with someone called philip beach now philip beach yes. is a huge person when it comes to archetypal postures and natural yeah. living yeah and i started doing stuff with philip and this my of the friend called um, Luis, um, and he started showing me all these different movement patterns, and I fell in love with it because mm -hmm. at the time I was actually quite sick. Uh, I had just lost my dad. I was, you know, a fun I wasn't function functioning very well. I was very yeah. dysfunctional when it comes to my hormonal patterns and things like that, and I had okay. to get away from the weights. Yeah. So I needed something to be more restorative and make mm. me feel better. Mm. And I started these movements and I was like, wow, I actually feel really good. And mm. um, for quite a while, I actually had no niggles. My back was feeling the best it ever did. My ankles were improving mobility wise. And I was actually getting better in, into the full range of a squat. So right. I was like, yeah, let's keep on doing this. And basically what Luis and Philip both said is that I think it's there's a certain amount of gym positions that you get you, you go in i kind of remember the number but it's like i think mm. it's like 10 or 15 different positions yeah but life is so it involves so many more other movements mm. and we tend to forget about them and when we do we get efficient and then we when we get put into them positions then we struggle mm. Uh, mm. so the, the whole thing is trying to cover the whole base of all these movement patterns and it goes from being a child. If you watch a child getting up and down from the floor, they will use their body yep. in so many different ways. Mm. And that's kind of what we did. We used to roll around on the floor um, like kids. And yeah, it was it was really weird because no matter who I do it with, they would always laugh um, and yeah. they would always smile. And it was just yeah. it was just completely different to what you would usually see in the gym. And I used to get some looks. I used to get some very interesting looks. And my clients would be, please don't don't make me do this. And this is uh, this is at Les Mills? Yeah, at Les, yeah, Mills, at okay. Les Mills at the time. Yeah. Um, and then I moved and went to another gym. But um, yeah, it was it, just before I left Les Mills, there was more and more people kind of coming over saying, oh, so why are you doing that? Mm. And I started to explain it. And lo and behold, I mean, Animal Flows yeah. kicked off. There's all these different movement patterns that are happening, mm. which is wonderful. It's, it's mm. amazing to see. Um, so, yeah, so I, I still try my best to incorporate that. Um, mm. However, I'll be honest, I, I need to spend a bit more time doing it. Uh, okay. So <laughs> I need someone to keep me accountable. But I love, <laughs> I love, I love, I love the movements. I love yeah. the movements. Yeah. yeah yeah they were they were stunning yeah they were um they were very animal flow-esque yeah but yeah. They, were, they were from what i know about animal animal flow i've only done level one they were they were different as well um mm. but they flowed i guess they had that that kind of flow to them which was which was the similarity um yeah. you mentioned your dad a moment ago and um obviously that would have been a, a challenging time is that what um led you in the direction of the the men's health ambassador was that the connection with you know just sort of men's health in general with with what all happened there yeah yeah and what happened with myself because after he passed ah, away yeah. I, I, I didn't know how to deal I, mm. uh, mentally emotionally wise I just wasn't prepared to deal with the grief I was running yeah. away from it mm. and it all came crashing down you know I was I was you could say I was abusing my body yeah a number of different ways and after learning about were going through it myself it was like I had this special lens and I could see other people who I used to look up to 
yeah. and I would see them dealing with the same issues. Yeah. And at first it was quite overwhelming because I didn't know how to go about trying to help mm. people. And um, eventually I started talking more and more about my story and men's health got in touch and asked if I would do some talks for them. Mm. I did, and they were like, "Look, we want you to be an ambassador. You, you kind of fit what we're looking for." And yeah. Um, yeah, it was it was a combination. Yeah, lose my dad because my dad was fifty, he was fifty three, so he was pretty young passing away at the time. I was 20, 24 as mm. well, so I was mm. I was young, and um, yeah, everything that he he that contributed to his death could have been prevented. So it yeah. was heart disease, it mm. was depression. It was mm. a lot of issues with the lungs as well. Right. Um, and it, a lot of it was a combination of loneliness as well. And it's something that a lot of guys won't mm. admit mm. to experiencing. They've, you know, you ask someone if they're all right, they say, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. But um, yeah. yeah, and once, yeah, once I did that, it just, it was like a, <laughs> it, it was a life-changing kind of, little journey that I went through and I just thought I need to try and do something if I can help even one person that's that's more than enough um mm. and I've continued to do so and we still do talks I still try to come up to Auckland we do a men's health breakfast but because of COVID and everything that's been happening there right. that's been yeah. postponed okay. but yes yeah, so trying to do events and trying to do talks as well to try and get guys a little bit more um proactive about their their physical and mental health yeah yeah so it sounds rewarding because as you say one person would be enough but obviously you're impacting way more than one person so um it's it's the sort of work which um kind of fills your soul you know gives you that yeah. um obviously there's the day-to-day -day client stuff which is good but um this is almost sort of you know sits on another level emotionally in terms of where you've been and how much of an impact it had on you but you've kind of you've gone through that journey and you've you've looked after yourself, you've, you've fixed your body after the abuse. And um, it's a, it's quite a powerful story. Yeah, it's, uh, I look back and think, I don't know, I don't know how I went through it, to be honest with you at the time. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was, I think there was last year, there was one thing that come into my mind in particular, there was a guy who was struggling, and he started having suicidal thoughts, and he reached out, we met up had a couple of conversations he did a couple of workouts with me as well mm. and uh, we still keep in touch and i mean i'm not i'm not qualified within that at all i was well within my without my uh, range when it comes mm. to to that but um yeah he ended up getting help from a counselor and the counselor reached out and said you know thank you for doing what you you did i think if you hadn't have been there at that time we don't know what would have happened and yeah. i mean that that was yeah, that, that was crazy to have to have mm. that sort of feedback. And um, mm. yeah, as I say, I'm, I'm, I'm always happy to listen. And uh, I think that's half the challenge, just having someone to speak to at certain times. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Do you feel like you've got a radar now? Like you mentioned before, you know, you sort of have a different lens now. Do, yeah. do you feel like you know when when you're just out and about and you you may have conversations here and there you kind of you're more tuned into I think this person might need some support do you, does that kind of happen yep. yeah yep yep it's um yeah. and it's usually the the loudest people it's the the loudest ones because they tend to put the mask on it's like right. the macho the macho mask yeah um, yeah so uh there's so there's them and there's also the ones who are very quiet but quiet can be a sign of you know you're comfortable within yourself as well so you've mm. got to be but there's certain things, if there's certain triggers, if they say certain things, that's a red flag. I'll be like, okay, right, you've said okay. that. I'll okay. keep that aside. Um, yeah. And then I usually just drop my message, just saying, oh, yeah. it was awesome meeting you. You know, yeah. um, do you want to catch up and do something? Yeah. And, and usually I find if it comes to walking, walk is probably the best thing you can do because you're not staring at each other. It's not face to face, yeah. you're more side to side. Yeah. So it takes the pressure away and it just makes it more organic. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, and then usually, ask one or two questions and then it just all comes out good people are prepared to open up yeah mm. yeah they obviously feel comfortable and, and have that that automatic sort of level of, of trust it must mm. be difficult though like i mean if you've got that lens how do you switch it off and how do you not have a thousand different walking meetings in a week because you've you've met certain people and gone <laughs> yeah it's um it, it has been challenging and it has been very there's been times when it's been overwhelming and i've yeah. just had to slow down um you know when you as you as you know once you start helping people you kind of just want to help 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 but yeah. if you're not helping yourself at the same time it comes you crash uh yeah. so yeah it's 
it's there are other people and I've networked with and in particular I know Lululemon and Movember do quite a few events and yeah. I've been able to yeah just meet up with other guys who are who are starting to really move the movement on I mean I was there I would say kind of right at the start yeah. when it was just getting spoken about in New Zealand but now there are mm. so many different groups happening and so many amazing people doing amazing events as well so um yeah mm. it's definitely helping to take the burden off yeah that's good that's good so it's becoming a bit more mainstream in terms of structures and supports yeah. that are out there and that people can easily identify with in terms yeah. of needing help so mm. you, you talked about looking after yourself and um and, and lululemon in the same sentence and i know obviously you're keen you know you talked about running and uh, that's that's one of the things that you do would, would that definitely be one of those things that that's the yeah you know, the sort of the me time for you 100 yeah. percent um running I, I feel like i can have a problem but by the end of the run i have a solution or i just have a time away and i mean i've only recently gotten to trail running and i wish i had known about it earlier just yeah. getting out in nature yeah. Yeah, i just yeah. i just love it and um yeah i try to go usually when the sun rises as well it just seems to rejuvenate me and yeah. um yeah and it's it's definitely my my guilty pleasure even though my partner probably thinks i'll run a bit too much um, but apart from that uh yeah it's that's food as well food is definitely something that kind of creating different meals that's more of me and um yeah and just actually trying to sit down and relax because being self-employed is as you know and having a very active mind and mm -hmm. yeah that that seems to be something that i one of my own struggles that i i work with sure sure um so yeah talking about food you um you put this book together on on, on some of your, your sort of your, your favorite or or most um um you know appetizing um, yeah. <laughs> plant-based uh, yeah. nutrition which i i bought from you and um was really really useful because not only was it handy for myself but i was able to kind of share different recipes mm. with clients when the conversation came up so um again was that part of that journey that you you kind of became more plant-based and so you know you kind of you just got your ideas down onto into that book yes yeah, so, i mean it all stems from yet again when my dad passed i had a mm. lot of gut i had a lot of gut issues mm. um and i just found i i tried so many different things i tried there was i was diagnosed with them called candida which is just a, a fungal or the growth in in the right. in the guts yeah um so i couldn't eat so many things for so long mm. and i was moving from one thing to another i tried them all and for some reason when i tried going plant-based my gut actually enjoyed it mm. and i realized i wasn't getting the rashes i had more energy i was absorbing uh, nutrients a little bit easier yeah now could that have been because i was understanding stress management a bit better it could well be mm. I, at the time i was like um i think it could be the food as well and um i was eating i was my kind of usual foods the diversity was increasing because i was sticking to the same sort of things over and right. over again yeah um, where with this one i was trying new foods and yeah it was just just some of the things and i mean i'm a huge fan of uh, eating well cooked food so mm, slow cooked mm. food is, is my kind of go-to yeah. and I know it's easier for me to absorb nutrients just through that mm. um, so I just started looking at what I could do um, and it was a challenge at first because you know the, the meat was the center piece of the dish and then all yeah. of a sudden it was like right the vegetables have got to be the, the centerpiece so yeah mm -hmm. mixing different herbs and spices and um, yeah definitely getting more creative was fun and yeah, just somehow I was able to come up with quite a few recipes and I just thought it would be a good idea because I had quite a few people reaching out because I was posting that on social media and they were like, oh, look, I'd be interested to know more about this. So I just kind of put something together thinking I wasn't going to, you know, maybe five or 10 people would get it, but it ended up doing really well. And um, yeah, nice. I've ended up, I ended up taking part in a documentary um, huh. and, and uh two actually it would have been three years ago about being plant-based yeah um so it was it was nice to be part of that yeah and yeah i i've done one or two talks with a couple of doctors as well which is quite cool so nice yeah i missed that damn i'm gonna have to go and look that up is it is it available to view somewhere the um yeah so it's a yeah so it's a it's a guy from auckland his name is grant dixon yeah um 
And yeah, it's, his story is really remarkable. Uh, how I think he had a heart had a heart attack and he was told that he would not be able to do live the life that he used to lead. Right. And he was determined to prove them wrong, did the research, learned a lot of things about himself. And then from there, you know, he went plant-based and yeah, right. he ended up running. And I think he ended up running a race because mm-hmm. he liked to run. Um, and he ended up getting a PB after like 25 years of running or something like that. Jeez. So it's, it's, yeah. So it's a, yeah. it's a pretty cool story. Yeah. Um, and uh yeah, so it's um, so yeah, it's it's called the big fat lie. That's what he calls it. Oh, okay, this. okay. I might scroll that down actually. <laughs> um, so um, one of the things that um, you know, the PT graduate stands for is it's all about helping you know PTs getting in and staying in the industry. It's about sustainability, and so I try and pick pick my guests' brains on that. Well, any any tips, advice? you know, from, from your career that you've sort of thought, well, you know, that was a win that that's something that I should, you know, should be doing to sustain this business. Um, you know, what have you, what have you learned along the way that could be, could be useful? Uh, let go of your ego. That's a yep. huge one. Um, I think, you know, be willing to work with other trainers and, and share ideas and evolve together. It should be really the PT that you are when you first started to the trainer you will mm. be are going to be completely different ones. Mm. Um, so don't feel like you know everything. Um, if, if there's someone there who knows more, ask for help. The more, I think that's a, a huge a bit of an issue with PTs. We tend to keep everything to ourselves. We want to try and build a business. But I've found the more that I share and the more I open out, the more opportunities have come across. So yeah. that would definitely be one. Yeah. Um, Obviously, continual education, uh, making sure that you are always looking to improve knowledge um, for mm. yourself, for your clients. Um, it makes the job more interesting. I mean, I don't think I would be in this job now if I was still doing the same things as what I was from year one. Yeah. Um, set some goals and actually be scared of the goals as well, like being like, wow, this would be pretty, pretty amazing to do. Yeah. And let's just say you don't make it even then you're still moving forward yeah but i usually if it's something that aligns well with you you'll find a way um Mm -hmm. uh and um (laughs) definitely for me this is me this has been a godsend for me um before i moved to the u uh sorry to new zealand i was i didn't have an accountant get an accountant get someone (laughs) get someone to look after that stuff and and just 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 put money away and do not touch it. Just be yeah. very vigilant. There are times where business will go well and it will go down. Mm. And if you can prepare yourself for the quieter times, then that is a huge thing. And, you know, yeah. business yeah. model and business coaching as well, which yeah. I think you do, Rich. So if uh, <laughs> PTs want to reach out to Rich. Uh, well, you're too kind. <laughs> uh, Thanks, Ben. <laughs> do, do so just because, yeah, it's... Um, it is a hard business. It is a hard, it's, it's, it doesn't, I've known from the time I've known a lot of PTs who've come in and yeah. unfortunately have not been able to make it. So, um, yeah. yeah, yeah, just, yeah. the core values, just make sure that, you know, you're always looking back at the core values of why you got into the industry mm. in the first place mm. and don't get lost with the noise. That's awesome, Ben. I love those. I love those points. Some, some have been um, mentioned by other people and particularly that ongoing education and some of your own as well, which is, which are, are absolute gold. And I, I really appreciate that. Thanks, Ben. Um, before we wrap up, is there anything I haven't asked that um, I should have anything to discuss? Oh, thank you. Uh, oh. Trying to think what else could I help with? Um, Oh, passion, passion projects. Make sure ah. you, you inc- include a, if you're passionate about something, yeah. follow, follow it. Don't, don't ignore it. Yeah. Uh, go, go with it. Cause you'll find, yeah, you will find that if you've got a passion, it's easy to get up early in the morning. It's easier to work day in, day out on it. Um, and I kind of use that as my treat when I'm, so I'll do the stuff first thing in the day that 
might not be my favorite thing, mm. but I'm more motivated to do. And then mm. I know at a certain time I can do my passion work and that will uplift me. And then I tend to have energy for later on in the day. Nice. Awesome. Perfect. Love it. That's great. Thank you, Ben. Um, no problem. If people are looking for you, it's beneduce.com. Is that right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. And cool. Uh, on so- or social medias or IGs, are, um, yeah. I tend to post daily on Instagram okay. uh, more and, and Facebook as well. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Look, thanks so much for your time, Ben. I know you're busy and it's been great to catch up. Good to see you again. And we should, uh, we should try again and do this again in another six months or something. Awesome. More so to do that. have a fantastic day and I'll catch you soon. Uh, take care. Cheers, Ben. That's it.